Hello and welcome back to Cinnamon Sanctuary. Welcome to my new and old subscribers. Today we'll be making condensed milk bread, which is a standard milk bread, but with condensed milk added in the dough, as well as as a glaze on top of the bread. It's so delicious, it's nice and fluffy, and it's homemade, you can't go wrong with that. So without further ado, let's get baking this time. So we're going to start by mixing up about a cup of milk, a quarter of a cup of your condensed milk, one egg, about two teaspoons of yeast and a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The yeast we'll be using for this bread recipe is going to be fast action yeast, which means that it can be directly added onto the dough. We don't need to wait for it to bloom separately in tepid water or tepid milk. So this acts very quickly. You just can add it directly on to your dough, which makes it a lot easier. So as you can see, I'm just mixing up all of the ingredients, making sure that the egg is nicely broken up. And once that's done, we can go ahead and add the flour. So there's three and a half cups of all purpose flour, but you can also use bread flour if you prefer. That will work perfectly fine. And um, to the flour, I added a teaspoon of salt. I didn't show this on camera, so just make sure that you combine some salt into your flour. So this has all been added up now. We can combine this um, either using your hand or a spoon. I find it easier to start using the spoon at first. And once this forms into a nice hard dough, you can start using your hand. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button. It really does help. It helps to support my channel. It helps me understand what viewers like to watch and it does, it does make a big difference. So please hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe, it's free. I would really appreciate it. Once the dough is compact, you can go and add in your melted butter. So it's not completely melted, but it's softened butter and then combine. Okay, at this point, the spatula was no longer making sense. So I had to get rid of it. So I'm just using my hand now and then um, I'm just preparing it to take it out of the bowl and then um, transfer it onto a lightly floured surface. So once this dough is very, very sticky at this point, which is why we went in with the flour on the surface, which is going to help get rid of the stickiness. So I'm just working it with my hand. So with one hand at the moment and just coating it in the flour to ensure that the dough is no longer so elastic. And um, at this point it's going to make it easier for me to work it. So the way I'm going about this is I'm just kind of shaping it into a ball at first and then pressing with my palm and stretching. Press and stretch, press and stretch. That's the best way I can describe it, but I do hope it makes sense. And um, I hope it's um, nicely demonstrated um, on the clip in here. This is a bit of a workout, eh? but um, I promise that it will be worth it. You can also use a machine if you have a machine. This is perfectly fine as well. And um, I must have worked this dough for just under 10 minutes. And this is ready for proofing when once stretched, it no longer tears. So as I'm showing you here, I'm just showing you that this dough is not tearing, which means that we can now transfer it to a bowl for proofing. Just adding about a teaspoon of olive oil into the bowl to ensure extra slippage or slipperiness or whatever the word is. And I'm going to transfer my dough now into the bowl, cover it up and let it proof in a warm environment for an hour. An hour later, the dough will have doubled in size, as you can see. So I'm just going to punch it up a little bit to get rid of the extra air which would have formed inside prior to transferring it onto a surface. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just shaping the dough into a big rectangle, at which point we're going to divide this in two. This is enough for two loaves as we are making, this will be making two loaves, so we're going to divide this lengthway. have one half of the dough here so with the help of a rolling pin I'm just going to flatten this ever so slightly until we get like a further rectangle and at this point we are just going to roll this up very tightly. Once we've achieved this sort of sausage shape, we have to ensure that the ends are nicely sealed up, after which you have to turn them down, so seal down. And then we can go ahead and divide this into seven pieces. Once the dough has been divided into these pieces, they can then be transferred onto a baking tin. So I'm using a loaf tin, and um, the loaf tin will have to be buttered previously so you have to line the bottom with a some parchment paper and then kind of grease it up and it will be ready to be transferred to a warm area for a second proofing. The reason why we slice the dough up into several pieces is so we can achieve this nice tear and share effect really, that's about it. It looks really pretty, the end result looks quite pretty and it makes it easier to divide up once the bread is cooked or baked. Both of the loaves can now be transferred into a warm area for a second proofing for 45 minutes. While the bread is baking, we can prepare our glaze. So we have three tablespoons of condensed milk to which we added three tablespoons of melted butter. And we can now just combine this and then set aside. The loaves have been baking for 23 minutes in my case, but each oven varies so it might take a little bit longer or a bit less, so it does vary um, according to the oven. And this is what they look like, don't they look pretty, they look so pretty and I can't wait, I couldn't wait to dig into them, but we'd have to ensure that we brush our glaze on top of them and then um, this will add like an extra pretty effect and then the glaze will have to sort of set just um, dry for I don't know I let it dry for about half an hour before demonstrating the rest so stay tuned and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside The glaze is now semi-dry so I'm just going to tear off a couple of pieces to show you what it looks like and we have a nice flaky consistency which would have been achieved by us rolling the dough up really tightly earlier. Every time you roll your dough up very tightly you will end up with a flaky pastry or bread as you can see in this case and this was nice and soft and squidgy and buttery and quite reminiscent of what you will find in a brioche loaf for example, I thought it was quite similar and it came out amazingly. The kids loved it so much. So yes, quite pleased with the result. I hope you try this too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon on my next video. Bye.